And what do we know about history? Today we'll take a look at the mainstream narrative and compare it to what we see with our own eyes. Welcome. Recently, somebody sent me an article talking about the possibility that they may stop teaching history in school. And I think they're better off. Everything they've taught us seems to be a complete lie, an indoctrination in order to get us to behave in a certain way. Today, we'll explore the history of mankind. What do they say about the history of mankind? If we look at the time scale of both history and science of the mainstream narrative, we come from a very recent time. The narrative of evolution being millions of years, and for hundreds of thousands, we're a primitive, ape-like creature, and in a short amount of time, maybe 10,000 years, we begin acting like man. We begin farming and cultivating really very recently. We begin living in caves and building smaller structures, huts, and eventually log cabins homes, mansions, and skyscrapers, and land on the moon. And that's a very nice story, if that's what we would see all around us. If this narrative made any sense, we could go back to these points in time and fit the pieces together. But that does not seem to be what we see. What do we see? We see that the further back we go to mankind's history, the more glorious the architecture and style of construction. Buildings that are narrative attributes to being over a thousand years old are actually some of the more impossible structures to build. Structures that we're unable to replicate today, such as the Great Pyramids and the massive ruins of Baalbek, just to name a few. And what else do we see? Everything that we see under our oceans are also ruins. From a time when the waters did not lay on these cities. And now this is exactly what we see. Glorious cities lying underwater from a time much older than anything we research on the surface. And moving forward to something a little more conceivable for us to wrap our heads around we begin to look at the 18th and 19th century and the buildings and architecture are now smaller than what we see from the ancient world, but still massive in comparison to what we create today. And using building methods that do not line up with the means that the people in that time period had available to them. Massive columns, enormous, overdone spires and monuments before the supposed invention of the crane, still using the horse and carriage as a means of transportation 
we are led to believe that these people constructed everything that we see in the 18th and 19th century. A very limited population seeming to waltz into these cities and take over after a plane-wide extinction event. And again, we've hypothesized where these people come from, and we do see, if we can believe anything in the historical narrative, a shuffling of people and orphans all throughout this realm, from country to country, and if you trace back any lineage, eventually you get to a great grandparent or two, and you have orphan, seeming to just arrive on the scene. And I've hypothesized that these orphans may have been introduced to the world's fairs, and the world's fairs actually being something else, some sort of introduction to these new inheritors of this realm. Were they simply kept safe underground or in another part of this realm, safe from the last reset? Or were they manufactured a more modern Adam and Eve kind of story? Perhaps a little more like a test tube baby, grown from scratch, or even some less sinister type of breeding program, where they were finished off in these incubators, which were all the hype in this time period, and helped facilitate the repopulating of the realm. And finally, we see a people, once we have a photographic record, which really begins in the 1850s, where we have good dependable pictures. And what we see is a world that is already created. The most beautiful images of the prior civilization coming from this earliest photographic record and the more the photographs continue slowly the buildings and architecture begin to dwindle being demolished and replaced with less than comparable in beauty and quality and what else we can see from this early photographic record is a very unskilled unrefined people, at best acting like well-behaved children, supposedly at the peak of advancement based on the architecture they're supposed to have created, and yet just a mess, existing in streets of mud, no plumbing, not what we would expect of a people at the peak of their history. And really in conclusion, and fast forwarding to this time period, completely devolving and moving backwards even further. Not what we would expect if the narrative was correct. Today we build the worst buildings and architecture that we see anywhere all throughout history. The things we build are at best temporary and disposable. The glorious flaunting of architecture found in the old world such as fountains and monuments have been replaced with abstract junk with no meaning and the average man has no idea how to live working a job he hates 
in order to pay for an overpriced mortgage or renting of a cheap dwelling, paying for their food, which is constantly threatened by an artificial economic system. And unfortunately, all it would take to bring humanity to its knees would be to pull the plug on the power or the food supply. The complete decline of a civilization is what we see. Unable to house, clothe, and feed themselves if the power structure that they so despise were to pull the plug and stop providing for them. And this appears to be a snapshot of our history. And what does it really take to survive? Well, I think that's it for today. I do hope you enjoyed and have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.